Since late 2020, shoplifting and theft has shot through the roof, especially in big cities like New York. Many blame joblessness for the uptick in crime, which according to statistics is due to the economic repercussions of COVID. How are retailers responding to this crime wave? How deep does the crime go? And is there an organization behind it all? Before the pandemic ravaged our economy, ORCs, which is short for Organized Retail Crime, were stealing retail merchandise. Big cities such as San Francisco were hit the hardest, where authorities recovered over $50 million worth of merchandise in 2020. Ben Dugan is the head of ORC Prevention for CVS. He spends his days uncovering all types of sophisticated retail crime ring. However, his largest bust to date is the $50 million case conducted in San Francisco, where the findings revealed just how elaborate ORCs could be. At the national level, ORCs are responsible for costing companies $45 billion in 2020. Meaning that, despite Dugan's best efforts, the $50 million he found in his San Francisco case is a mere drop in the bucket. Dugan and the other companies afflicted by organized crime are in a constant battle with retail thieves. Dugan has stated that he is optimistic about the future, despite retail theft increasing by $15 billion over the past decade. His solution is to infiltrate the organizations themselves. But is that enough to stop the ORCs from growing? No one understands the scope of the problem like Dugan and many other investigators across the country who face the overwhelming task of stopping retail theft. They know that the scope goes way beyond people stealing items from stores. They encompass every aspect of the retail market, even the parts you wouldn't expect. So since 2017, Dugan has been gathering more intel and bumping up security by putting cameras everywhere, even on the packages themselves. He's carried out several undercover operations all to stop retail theft and learn how the massive web of ORCs operate within a retail industry dominated by Amazon. In the olden days, ORCs sold their loot at flea markets and resale shops. Now, they have Amazon. Home improvement retail giant Home Depot reports that the number of ORC investigations has grown 86% since 2016, with many of these operations involving e-commerce companies like Amazon or eBay. For that reason, Home Depot and many in law enforcement blame Amazon for the drastic uptick in retail theft over the past five years. Amazon's revenue grew from $177 billion in 2017 to $386 billion in 2020. Because Amazon's growth coincides with retail theft growing from $30 billion in 2011 to $45 billion in 2021, many investigators blame e-commerce for bolstering a not-so-secret black market on their site. The investigators who work for corporate retailers like Home Depot or CVS are often former police officers officers and detectives. Sergeant Ian Ranshaw of the Thornton, Colorado Police Department called Amazon the largest unregulated pawn shop on the face of the planet. But how does one regulate such a large pawn shop? Even the shop itself doesn't know. Amazon has continually stated that they try their hardest to hinder retail theft, spending $700 million to monitor their site for stolen items. Though they routinely cooperate with investigations, Amazon refuses to disclose seller information under the protection of privacy laws, making it very difficult for corporate investigators to conduct thorough investigations. Since Amazon is not doing much to deter retail theft, companies like CVS have felt pressured to match the rise in ORCs. Their response was the Operation Proof of Purchase. Earlier, we mentioned that Ben Dugan and his team of investigators recovered $50 million from ORCs in San Francisco, with plans to take 50 more after the suspects are tried in court. That inventory seizure was conducted under Operation Proof of Purchase. Operation Proof of Purchase centers around cooperation operation between CVS's corporate investigators and law enforcement. Dugan himself preaches and practices the close cooperation strategy. After the excellent results his operation has yielded, who can blame him? Dugan's operation began when his team joined forces with 100 public law enforcement members. They spread out and began investigating as well as monitoring business operations using the proof of purchase strategy. Define, disrupt, and dismantle. Defining may sound redundant, but given how e-commerce changed the entire retail theft landscape, it made sense for the investigative team to adjust their overall approach to match the new strategies adopted by ORCs. What they did not prepare to match was the advantage criminals would get from
from COVID. 2020, due to the lockdown restrictions, the investigators were relegated to defining the suspects instead of disrupting them. In the meantime, investigators gathered intelligence from employees, spent time reviewing video footage, and anything else they could access while under lockdown. Though the pandemic slowed the operation in 2020, it did not stop Dugan's team from finding plenty of potential suspects to convict. Once restrictions were lifted, investigators began extracting critical information from individuals called boosters. What's a booster? To put it simply, they are professional shoplifters. Their job within the ORC system is to steal the inventory for distribution, making them a good starting point for the investigation. After gathering intelligence, investigators apprehended the boosters and threatened them with charges from several agencies, giving them two options, cooperate or spend extra time behind bars. The boosters chose the former and gave the names of several street fences. Street fences are the individuals who team up with the boosters to buy and distribute the items stolen from CVS Warehouse. The boosters led proof of purchase investigators to three street fences who, after further investigating, revealed that the street fences were just the tip of the iceberg. The intelligence available led investigators into the Tenderloin neighborhood of San Francisco. From there, the team followed the evidence to a distribution warehouse in Concord, California. After observing the distribution center in Concord, investigators tracked the inventory to two other distribution warehouses and several storage units, all belonging to the same mysterious Bay Area-based organization. Eventually, proof of purchase accumulated enough evidence to issue arrest warrants on whoever was operating this sophisticated operation. Amongst the individuals put in handcuffs were Danny Drago and his wife, Michelle Fowler. Drago, also known as the Medicine Man, was 50 during his arrest, while his wife was 48. Appearing as an unassuming middle-aged couple, these were the heads of the snake that robbed San Francisco several years before COVID. Police started with the boosters, moved up to the street fencers, and now at last, captured the architects of a massive Bay Area ORC. However, detaining the Dragos was only the first step. Dugan's team, along with law enforcement, began unfolding Drago's sophisticated ORC. According to their findings, Drago had been soliciting stolen items through a shell company called Deluxe OTC. Under the hollow umbrella Deluxe, Drago was selling the items directly to customers through online marketplaces like Amazon and eBay. Drago's primary source of inventory came from pharmacies like CVS and their competitor Walgreens, alongside a long list of retail chains like target. Over the years, authorities estimate Drago stole around $50 million in merchandise from these retailers. So, what did Drago do with all that money? According to authorities, the money was laundered through legitimate real estate investments and other honest business ventures. As for Drago's stolen assets, authorities found just $8 million worth of stolen items like razor blades still boxed up in storage. Now that the head, along with his ORC, had been discovered, it was time to perform the third and last facet of Operation Proof of Purchases strategy, dismantle. When law enforcement arrested Drago, they had effectively dismantled an entire ORC. After sifting through Drago's retail theft business, authorities prosecuted the medicine man along with four of his alleged associates. They were charged on several counts, including money laundering, criminal profiteering, and possession of stolen property. With the plethora of information obtained from Drago's massive $50 million operation, Dugan and law enforcement have the experience needed to continue to dismantle these sophisticated organizations. Even small ones, like the convoluted operation run by extreme tool enthusiast Stephen Lane Skerritt. 62-year-old Skerritt got caught with a staggering amount of stolen home improvement merchandise from a Home Depot in Colorado in late 2020. The manufacturer who made the tools noticed their products were being sold on Amazon by an unauthorized seller. They notified the Department of Public Safety, who traced the account and its activity to someone living in a suburb outside of Houston. Authorities in Houston proceeded to work diligently with the retailers involved, primarily Amazon and Home Depot, and tracked down Skerritt, finding and arresting him at his home in West Houston. There, authorities found rooms stacked floor to ceiling with stolen inventory. The total haul removed from Skerritt's house is estimated to be around $1 million. Skerritt's operation was so large that he needed an elevator to transport his loot from floor to floor. After exam Examining his Amazon seller account, they determined that from 2018 to 2020, Skerritt had sold $5 million worth of stolen tools. In addition to the stolen tools, Skerritt also possessed several different types of illegal drugs. Steven Skerritt is just one of many retail thieves whose ORC grew to new heights during the pandemic. What drove that $30 billion to spike up to $45 billion so quickly? Along with the pandemic came restrictions such as mask mandates, job loss, and a temporary shutdown of 
several institutions like parts of our justice system. Masks help give potential shoplifters a legitimate reason to conceal their faces, leading to people like Scarrett thinking they could simply waltz into stores and swipe items without being caught. Joblessness contributed to the uptick in theft for two reasons. Some lost their honest jobs and turned to ORCs for money. On the flip side, widespread layoffs left retail stores understaffed. Nobody was there to catch these thieves. The economic shutdown resulted in most companies, especially retailers, having to cut jobs. When they finally opened in the summer, many stores lacked the workforce necessary to stop ORCs from swiping their inventory. Joblessness has also contributed to people choosing to steal. Statistics show that around 25 million Americans report not having adequate food or other life-sustaining resources in our pandemic-ravaged world due to job scarcity. These individuals often become desperate and end up resorting to shoplifting for survival. Retailers faced another tough situation in 2020 when confronted with a sudden drop in police protection as well as some states downgrading theft to a misdemeanor instead of a felony. If a cop can arrest a shoplifter, they will be back out on the streets almost immediately, free to continue their ORC business. With 2020 restrictions easing up due to the mass distribution of the vaccine, investigators like Dugan have more freedom to pursue ORC cases and hopefully bring the problem back down to pre-pandemic levels. Click here to watch one of these next videos.